Hey everyone, my name is Percy Jules and today I'm going to show you how to set up a multi-output instance of Contact 5 player in Studio One. Now let's first go to Instruments and just search for Contact 5 and just drag it to the track area and as you release it you'll see that a Contact player automatically opens up. Now as an example I'm going to use this plugin, Studio Drummer, which obviously is a drum plugin. Now as I click this little bar, it'll show me all the different kits I can choose from. And let's just select the first one. So Garage Kit Full, so double click and you can see it loading up. Now I'm gonna first scroll down a bit so I can open the mixer. And let's look at this for a second. Now as you can see, the mixer has 11 tracks dedicated respectively to the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, three toms, a tambourine and a cowbell, overhead stereo, overhead mono and a room mic. And actually there's also a twelfth one, but we'll get to that. Now of course, in most cases anyway, we want to control whatever signals are coming from these tracks individually from within the main mixer in Studio One. Now to set this up we need to do a few things. Now first of all we need to realize that this is, um, well you might say a host within a host situation. Because the Contact 5 player is kind of the host for the Studio Drummer plugin and Studio 1 is the host for Contact 5. So we need to set everything up in such a way that we can send all the outputs from Studio Drummer to or rather through the mixer in Contact 5 and then send all this to the Studio 1 mixer. Okay, now let's go back to the Studio Drummer uh, GUI. Now looking at the mixer, I think that in the Contact 5 mixer I'm gonna need 9 mono tracks and 3 stereo tracks. So 9 mono tracks for the kick, the snare, the hi-hat, the toms, the tambourine, the cowbell and the overhead mono track and 3 stereo tracks for the overhead stereo track, the room mic and as I mentioned there is also a 12th track and that is the master track which is not visible at this moment, but if you go up here to where it says buses and click on it, you will see that there is in fact a master track. Now by default everything is routed to this track. Now I'm going to route all the emulated microphones to bypass this track, but even then there is something that will still be routed through this track and that is the reverb. So the reverb will still be going here and correct me if I'm wrong but I think that that will be the only signal left that is going here. But anyway in the Contact 5 mixer we're gonna need a stereo track for this. Now let's take a look at the Contact 5 mixer area. Now by default this is set up with one stereo track and four stereo aux tracks. Now as mentioned we're gonna need a total of three stereo tracks so let's add two more to the already existing one. So let's go here to this little plus sign and just click it. Okay quantity, so how many tracks do we want? So let's set this to two. Uh, number of channels, now I'm gonna leave this set to two because we want stereo tracks. Uh, now sound card host output. Now of course to manipulate the signals coming from these tracks individually in Studio One we need to send these signals through different output channels. And we do that here. So let's open this drop down menu. Now here's where it gets a little bit complicated. I have been banging my head against the wall over this but I think I finally figured it out. At the end of this video I will give you some more information on how I think the routing in Contact 5 actually works, or at least in Studio One. For now I will continue with this setup and we'll get back to this in a few minutes. So as the first stereo track is being routed through output channels 1 and 2, we want to skip the first two channels and select the third one. Now make sure ascending output assignment is selected and click OK. So now we have three stereo tracks which are sending their outputs through channels 1 and 2, 3 and 4 and 5 and 6. Now we also need nine mono tracks so let's again click the little plus symbol 
and set the quantity to 9. Okay, now in this case we need mono tracks, so the number of channels should be set to 1. Okay, now let's open the drop down menu once more, and now, and this is important, even though we only have three stereo tracks assigned to the first six output channels, we should skip the first 10 channels and choose the first so-called unassigned channel, which is channel 11. Now again, at the end of this video, I will explain why, but for now, again, make sure that ascending is selected and click OK. So now, in addition to the three stereo tracks, we now also have nine mono tracks, which are sending their outputs through channels 11 through 19. Now, to make it a bit easier for ourselves, let's give all these tracks a name. So let's start with the first track. So just select the name, and I'm going to change this one to Master. Okay. Now, let me just name all these tracks, and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done. Okay, now the tracks now all have names. Now before this all takes effect, I will have to reinitialize contact. And the way to do that is just by clicking this little exclamation mark up here. And that's that. Now the next step is to route all the signals from Studio Drummer through the mixer in contact. So let's go to Studio Drummer again, and let's start with the kick. Okay, now make sure that settings is selected. Now, if you open this drop down menu, what you will see is a representation of all the output tracks in contact that I just created and named. And obviously, in this case, I'm gonna select kick. Now, let's go to the next track, which is called snare. Open the drop down menu again, and this time, Obviously, I'm going to select Snare. And let's do this for all the tracks. Okay, now all tracks in Studio Drummer are now routed through the outputs in contact. And now there is one final step to take. We need to create output tracks in Studio One to receive the outputs from contact with. Now, the way to do that in Studio One is just to go up here to the output symbol. Now, when you click it, you'll see a list of all available outputs for this instrument. Now, the only thing to do to actually create the tracks is just to select all relevant outputs in this list. And now, if we close contact for a second and open the mixer in Studio One, we can see that all the corresponding tracks have automatically been created. Now, for organization purposes, I'm going to quickly name these tracks. And again, I'll get back to you when I'm done. Okay, so that's that. The tracks have been named. Now it's time for a little test. I'm going to play a C1 on my keyboard, which will trigger a kick drum in Studio Drummer, the output of which will be sent through the output track in contact, which is also called kick, and the signal will end up on the output track in Studio One, which is also called Kick. So keep your eye on this track. Okay, that sounds good. You could see that the output is indeed going to this track. You might have noticed that as I was playing, there was also some activity on some other tracks, which is expected, because this track, the master track, this is where the reverb is going, remember? So there is some reverb on the kick, and as we've seen, the reverb is sent to the master track. There is also some, uh, well, as it is typically referred to as bleeding going on, especially on the snare track, so that is why you could see that meter going, and of course the room mic and the two overhead mics will also pick up some of the signal. Now, to be sure, let me just also trigger the snare and see what happens. Okay, perfect. So that is it. 
That is how you set up a multi-output instance of Contact 5 player in Studio One. Now before I say goodbye though, as promised, for those of you that are interested, I will explain quickly how I think the routing system of Contact 5 works, or at least in Studio One. So, it seems like the routing system in Contact is set up for you to have five stereo output tracks and any number of mono output tracks. The first 10 output channels seem to be reserved for the five stereo output tracks. So if you have five stereo output tracks and assign them to the first 10 output channels, everything will seem normal. If you set it up correctly, you will also have five stereo output tracks in Studio One, corresponding with the five output tracks in Contact. Nothing strange there. However, if you create a stereo output track and assign it to output channels beyond the first 10, something odd will happen. It will show up in the Studio One mixer, but not as a stereo track, but as two separate mono tracks. So keep that in mind. On the other hand, and this is very relevant for this tutorial, if you create a mono output track and assign it to one of the first 10 output channels, it will show up in the Studio One mixer, but not as a mono track, but as either the left or the right channel of a stereo track. So for example, let's take the kick track, which is a mono track in contact. If we were to assign this track to output channel 7, and we would assign another mono track, let's say for example the snare track, to output channel 8, the kick and the snare would be sent to the same stereo output track in Studio One. The kick would end up on the left channel and the snare would end up on the right channel. So that's why I recommend to always first create the stereo tracks in contact and as much as possible assign them to the first 10 output channels and if you create mono tracks never assign them to one of the first output channels. Always at least skip the first 10 and assign them to other output channels. So that is how I believe the routing in context works. Please let me know if you have a better explanation for this. I'd really love to know. Anyway, I hope this clarifies a few things. I want to thank you all for watching and I will talk to you soon.